Greetings from Japan. My name is Sharon Bignall and I'm the Trade Commissioner responsible for education in Northeast Asia. And in this video, I'd like to provide a snapshot of the current market trends and opportunities in the Japanese, Korean and Mongolian markets. Starting with Japan, which prior to the pandemic was Australia's fifth largest source market for Elicos, schools and the non-award sector, and a well-known source of short-term study tour groups. Prior to COVID, over 40,000 Japanese high school and university students were visiting Australia each year as part of a short-term study tour. While the pandemic has obviously had a heavy impact on all the key sectors, Australia continues to have a very positive image here in Japan, thanks to strong people-to-people -people links and a reputation for quality, education, safety and an abundance of lifestyle opportunities. While Elicos has been what most Japanese study, we're seeing increased interest in the school sector and higher education sector, particularly at the bachelor level. And while Japanese students' preference is still for on-campus education, and with key competitor countries already restarting uh, their programs to accept students for face-to-face -face study, there will be students who are switching destinations in order to commence in-country study sooner. In addition to our traditional competitors, options within the region are also becoming increasingly popular and we expect this trend to continue post-pandemic as Japanese students opt to stay closer to home or look for more affordable options. Turning to areas of opportunity now, we're seeing growing interest in dual or double diploma programs among Japanese high schools where students receive two high school diplomas upon graduation. And we're also seeing interest from Japanese universities to set up dual or double degrees as they look to differentiate themselves in the highly competitive domestic market and also welcome more international students to their campuses by offering more degrees in English. Study abroad is another area of interest and for universities, particularly one year programs that combine EAP with a semester of academic study. And a final area of opportunity is short term study tours. And we've seen a number of these uh, that would normally be sending students abroad pivot to offer online study tour options instead. And we continue to raise awareness of the quality and variety of online programs Australian institutions can provide to encourage Japanese institutions to go virtual rather than cancel or postpone their usual in-country study tours. Finally, a point on doing business in Japan. This really is a relationship-driven market where mutual trust is key. Agents are important, almost all students apply via them, and students and parents place significant trust in them. So make sure you keep in touch, even if they may be finding it hard to send you students at the moment. For those with institutional partners, touching base to see if they're interested in any of your virtual programs may lead to new opportunities. Moving now onto Korea, another important diversity market. In 2019, it was Australia's eighth largest source market overall, third largest for schools, fifth largest for VET, seventh largest for Elicos, and twelfth largest for higher education. And traditionally, Australia has been seen as an attractive destination for those Koreans wanting to gain practical skills or work experience and internships as part of their studies. And also the post-study work visa is popular with higher education graduates. For these reasons, most Koreans have been keen to study face-to-face -face despite the pandemic. And anecdotal evidence from agents suggests that higher education students are more willing to wait to commence their studies or start online and transfer onshore later. But Elicos schools and vet sector students are tending to switch, primarily to Canada. Turning to the policy space, we're seeing the Korean government proactively look to attract foreign universities and schools to set up branch campuses. And one reason is to attract more international students to Korea, and another is to encourage more Koreans to choose to study at home as the school age population declines. In the Incheon Free Economic Zone, there are now five foreign branch campuses, and in Jeju Island in the south, there are a number of international schools from Canada, the US and UK. The Korean government is also keen to expand online and blended learning delivery models, including in collaboration with foreign providers, and recently allowed 100% online joint degrees between Korean and foreign universities. However, demand is not that high from Korean institutions to set these up yet. Generally, when developing partnerships, Korean universities prefer to start with smaller engagements like study abroad and exchange, and then scale up to joint programs once the partnership is more established. In terms of engaging the market, relationships are also key in Korea and are forged through frequent engagement, quick responses to questions or issues, and support for events and activities. Keep engaging with your partners and participate in their webinars and events where possible to maintain your relationships and brand profile in the market. Finally, moving on to Mongolia, 
This is a market not as familiar to many, but was one of the fastest growing source countries with double digit growth every year from 2012 up until the onset of the pandemic. While Australia was the second most preferred English speaking study destination for Mongolian students behind the US prior to the pandemic, online learning is not the norm in Mongolia. So this puts us in a challenging competitive position to secure new commencements of students if they're not already onshore. However, all the fundamentals are there for the market to bounce back once border restrictions ease. And for Australian universities, there are a range of scholarships available from both the Australian and Mongolian governments. And many large companies also sponsor their staff to undertake postgraduate study in Australia. Foreign degrees and English language skills do attract a premium for graduates in the Mongolian job market. And for those who are self-funded, they're not that uh, rankings focused and are more focused on price and on gaining practical skills that will lead to employment outcomes. Another characteristic of the market is that over 80% of Mongolians choose to study in Sydney due to a large Mongolian community that's formed there with strong positive word of mouth. In terms of opportunities that don't depend on borders, uh, opportunities exist to partner with large companies in Mongolia, particularly mining companies and or Mongolian education providers to deliver short courses and skills training online to meet the demand arising from new mining, construction and infrastructure projects. So to conclude, I'd just like to mention that we have a team in Northeast Asia to help you achieve your goals in the region. So please do reach out to us if there's anything we can do to support you. And thank you very much for listening. And we look forward to working with you in Japan, Korea and Mongolia.